Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warcraft The Burning Crusade Classic. Robert Rambles here and thank you so much for joining me today. We are headed into the Badlands today. We're going to get a last final look here at the verdant forest of Loch Modan as we cross the border into the Badlands. We won't be seeing healthy trees anytime soon. Uh, but I believe that there are some quests here that we can do at our level. Uh, that we might be a little bit too high of a level for some of them, so we're going to come down here and take a look. But yeah, I've been trying to find quests that are not in Stranglethorn Vale just to see some different sights and experience some different things. And right away I should say that I'm not too familiar with this zone, but I think that there should be some quests. I thought one was in the shadow of this this initial mountain here that we come up to. Maybe somewhere down here. I don't think there's exactly a, an alliance town or anything like that, but I know that there were a few scattered quests here and there to pick up. Yeah, there's one over here. Let's go see what this is about. We've got a couple of dwarves. What's on your mind? And Sigrun Ironhue here has two quests for us. Let's take a look. Fiery Blaze Enchantments. As an apprentice to Feror Steeltoe, I learned his special technique for imbuing weapons with fiery enchantments. Last I heard of him, he was working at a smithy with a hunting party up near Lordaeron. I can't tell you too many of the details about the process, but I can tell you it requires blood from a rare, still-beating Black Drake Whelp's heart. I don't have much to do waiting for word from Ironforge. If you bring me a heart from the Whelps in Lethlore Ravine, I'll show you my skill. Acquire a Black Drake's heart from Lethlore Ravine. Doesn't give us any uh, compass directions as to where that might be. Watch your back. Great to meet you. And mirages. In our hurry to leave the Oldemont excavation site, we were forced to abandon many wagons and crates of supplies along the way. The local ogres from Camp Kosh have been our abandoned have a, been on our abandoned equipment like vultures on a rotting corpse. Don't smell much better either. Than the corpses, I mean. Anyways, they took the cart and was carrying all our weapons and such, so, well, this is a bit embarrassing. We haven't been able to get any food. We're in a bit of a pickle here. Suppose you could help us out? Retrieve the supply crate. See you soon. Alright, a couple of hungry dwarves. Down on their luck. So the excavation site, uh, maybe... Well, I guess he said back near Oldemon, right? Camp Kosh. So we're looking for Camp Kosh, and then we're looking for the Lethlor Ravine. Well, let's mount up, and maybe we should go up back this way and make sure that we've actually uncovered everything there is. We're going to investigate whatever this is over here as well. The Anger Fortress. So who do we have over here? We have uh, Dark Irons. And I want to go check around Uldaman as well to see what enemy types we have over that way.
All right, no ogres around here either, just more dark iron dwarves. So the ogres we're looking for are just going to be somewhere to the south. Maybe we head over to the east, since most of the map over there has not been revealed yet. Well, this says we're, we are now in Camp Kosh, so I guess we went the right way. It looks like it's a camp nestled back here in the mountains, in this little valley. And we're looking for a supply crate. I'm not sure if that's going to drop off one of the ogres. More likely, it's something we need to click on on the ground to pick up. So let's keep our eyes open. Excavation supply crate. Okay, we need to take out probably all three of these guys in order to get to it safely. Shouldn't be too hard. They are level 35, so we do outlevel them by quite a bit. And they don't seem to be smart enough to run away from us when they're about to die. I guess we didn't need this one, but we might as well take him out. He's a witness to what happened here, so we should just kill him. It is the world of Warcraft, after all. No reason for mercy or humanity. Let's grab the crate. And we will herb this king's blood over here, if we can. Alright, now we are off to find the Lethlor Ravine. We are just gonna make a little bit of a circuit here, as soon as we can get out of this valley. And just uncover all the parts of the map. Maybe we'll run into more quests if we're really lucky. It doesn't seem like there is a hub here of any kind. There's no arrows pointing us to a town or anything like that. What about over this way? Can we get back over into this area? Uh, yeah, we can. Okay, yeah, let's check out up here. Apparently, for all the difficulty of getting up here and how the entrance was kind of hidden, apparently there's nothing going on up here. There are some rabid crag coyotes, and that's it. Alright, well here's a Scalding Whelp, uh, maybe what we need to try to get the Black Drake's Heart. I mean, this is a Black Dragon Whelp, so... Something tells me we wouldn't be hunting full-grown dragons at this point.
Okay, we are in the Lethlor Ravine. It says it up here above the minimap. I didn't see any... Any kind of ping, but I guess I missed it. It does say we discovered it. Look away from your screen for one minute. So, this is where it's at if you're looking for it. And once you've discovered it, it marks it pretty largely on the map here. It's a prominent feature of the zone, apparently. And these guys are level 42, so they have, as we saw, they're a bit of a wider aggro radius for us. Didn't get our charge off there, unfortunately. I really don't want to get to it once. Okay, good. He left us alone for some reason. He flew off in the opposite direction. Yeah, I don't think I want to fight two of these guys at the same time. Not at half health, anyway. Mainly because they're using magical attacks, which affect us a lot more than a physical attack would. Hey, level 44. Let's take a look at our talents. Alright, let's take a look at our talents after we fight this guy. How about that? I don't need to worry about demoralizing Shout or Thunderclap on these guys, I don't think. Because we're not going to be worried about slowing their attacks because they're casting. And demoralizing Shout is decreasing melee attack power. Again, something that won't affect these, so we're going to cut those out of our rotation while we're fighting these. Let's take a look here. Uh, we could grab another point in Second Wind whenever you're stunned and or immobilized, you will regenerate 20 rage and 10% of your total health. Are we getting stunned a lot? I'm sure against certain enemies that'd be really useful, but... Like, think about Basilisk and how they have that little, like, 5 second daze they do consistently. Or improve disciplines. Reduce the cooldown of your retaliation, recklessness, and shield wall abilities by 10 minutes. Wow, that's a huge cooldown no matter what. Um, yeah, otherwise we put a point into sword spec, um, which we could do. We do have a sword on right now, but who knows when we're going to replace that. Yeah, we do need to keep working down. Hmm. All right, let's go one point into sword specialization for right now and see how that goes. We're probably going to regret it. It's probably going to result in a respec later on, but we will see. Says he'll cut it out of his rotation, presses the button anyway. I have to say, there are not many abilities in this game that are quite as satisfying as a warrior's charge ability, just pressing that button and rushing into combat from so far away. It's probably one of the most gratifying buttons to hit. On the opposite end of that, on the opposite end of the gratification scale, is like pressing Frostbolt on a mage. <laughs> just pressing Frostbolt. Huge difference in how you're opening combat and how that combat then feels through its duration. Although ma Mage can have exciting moments when you're trying to kite or handle multiple enemies at a time. But just as, as for openers though, I think the warrior pretty much takes it. 
I guess if you're huge into like the rogue fantasy, maybe stealthing in and just getting a huge crit on a backstab is probably also as gratifying. The rogue is one class that I've never really put any significant amount of time on, either in classic or in retail. A little bit of a weird place to fight this thing, but okay. I really wish we had an interrupt that we can use from Battle Stance. That would be amazing. So I'm kind of wondering, I mean, obviously, if this is a drop off these enemies, and I've been assuming that it is, it's a really rare drop, right? I mean, we've killed quite a few, we haven't got it. What I want to do is I want to go further into the ravine. I want to make sure that there's not a different type of Black Drake that we could be fighting. Uh, that isn't these guys. As fun as it is to kill these guys. Let's head further in and just take a look. While, of course, killing anything in our way, obviously. And there we go. I guess talk about it, complain about it, and it'll drop for you. And so, what do we want to do now? We should probably kind of cut around through here, explore this middle area, and then go back up to turn the quest in, just to make sure that we've kind of given the zone a once-over. Uh, because again, I'm not really familiar with where there might be quests to take here. I know that there are some. I, I don't... Oh, there were different drakes down here, too. Oh, these are elites. Uh, do I want to even run through here? Uh, no. <laughs> no. I don't want to run through here. We're going to go out and around. Uh, but yeah, without without knowing where the quests are, I really feel like I have to explore the zone more fully and just kind of look around and hope that we run into more quests because we could definitely use some. Alright, dismounted. Not good. Not good. If we can drop everything besides this guy, then maybe we just fight this coyote. I think we're good. I don't think any of the drakes are following us. Use our 23 minute cooldown retaliation there just to be, you know, a little bit dramatic. Oh, let's take this guy on too while we still got time left on it. Alright, let's try to go back and find the quest giver, get, the, get this turned in, and then we will venture out and try to find more quests.
Eventually I'll remember where we picked this up. It was further south, wasn't it? There we go, we found it. Look at that. We also have a buddy to take care of. We are pretty low on health, and we should probably consider bandaging up or eating some food. Let's eat some food, and then we'll turn these in. Yeah, we have to hit level 45 so we can get the next level of food, because we're storing 1300 health over 30 seconds when we have 2100 health total is not that effective. And the bandage is not much better. We do need to find the, the trainer that can teach us the heavy mage weave bandage. We're ready for that. You got my attention? All right, so the follow-up to the food quest, we have a scrounging. It's going to be tough going here if I can't manage to scrounge up some materials to construct some defenses and other necessities. I've noticed that the ogres in the area seem to be well-equipped with scrap metal. Maybe the stories of siege engines in the Badlands weren't so far off after all. Anyway, the prospector's been getting worried about the state of our little camp, so I'd like you to get working soon if I can. The main ogre camp is at Dust Belch Grotto. A good trek to the west of here. Get seven pieces of scrap metal for Sigrun. Get Dust Belch Grotto to the west. Seven pieces of scrap. Off with you. How are ya? Let's turn in the dragon heart. Safe travel. Okay, and that one did not change. So what we picked up was far to the west. Okay, let's. Let's do that, we're gonna do that, but I also think we just need to have a look around in this area. Let's kind of circle down here, and then we'll cut across the middle and head west. Oh, there's a quest from a random blood elf. Perfect. Alright, like I said, I knew that there were some quests. I thought that there was another one somewhere to the north, but I didn't see anything up there. Okay, so there's a quest here from Garrick. Tremors of the Earth. I heard from Sigrun that you have been a great help to him. Perhaps I might enlist your help. I was sent here by my master, Crassus of the Kirin Tor, to put an end to the troubling brewing in Lethor Ravine. Or the trouble brewing, even. I cannot divulge the exact nature of my assignment here, or the task that I must undertake, but be assured it is of vital importance. A band of wandering ogres, sometimes seen near Camp Boff, stole an object called the Sign of the Earth. I must have it. Bring it to me, and I will tell you more. Alright, so he was sent here by the Kirin Tor to put an end to the trouble brewing in Lethor Ravine. And he wants us to go to Camp Boff to get a object called the Sign of Earth. Okay. Camp Boff. No directions uh, whatsoever to Camp Boff. Till next we meet. But maybe we'll find it. In fact, we probably will. Oh, it's already marked on our map. It's already it's already revealed. We just have to hover over the, the little thing. Camp Boff. Look at that. It was about 20 feet away. 
This guy just didn't want to make the walk in the heat. Alright, we need seven pieces of scrap from the ogres, and I'm seeing three of them, so I'm hoping we get respawns, or maybe there's a cave I'm not seeing? We'll have to look around. Yeah, that's it. Three Dust Belcher Ogres, and I don't see any others. Let's just have a little run around here and check the mountainsides. Not seeing any pathways to get up. Hmm. Hmm, <laughs> let's see. So Camp Both, maybe it extends, you know, out to the east, or rather that would be west, I guess. Yeah, okay, I see a couple other buildings here in the distance. Let's head over there, and maybe we'll find some more ogres. No, this is marked as something else. Agmon's End, and it has, uh, gnolls. There's bone snappers over here. And these aren't gnolls. I don't know why I call them gnolls. These are trogs? Right? Trogs? Alright, well, let's come back this way. So the scrap metal we can get from other ogres to the west. Here in Camp Boff, we need to find the object. Is this something that's just on the ground? A band of wandering ogres. These guys were kind of stationary, <laughs> actually. They were just hanging out here at the camp. Alright. Hmm. No sign of any wandering ogres. Don't see any that are like pathing around anywhere.
All right, I think I'm gonna come back to this. Uh, we're gonna head out to the west, and later we will come back here and we'll kill the same ogres and see if they drop something. And I, I don't think it's anything to pick up on the ground. I've scoured the area and there's nothing clickable, so. Not sure about that one. But to get the rest of the scrap metal, we need to head out to the west, so let's do that. Grab some herbs here along the way. At least if it's, uh, you know, a potential skill up. Okay, here are some ogres though. What's going on with these guys? They are moving around. Let's... let's go check that out. That's a lot of ogres. Uh, we're not gonna be able to take on that many on our own. Even if they're a couple levels beneath us. Yeah, I'm not sure how we would do that. I hope these aren't the ogres that they were talking about, because... If these are the traveling ogres, uh, we're not, we're not gonna deal with that. Oh, there's quest givers down here. Let's wait for these guys to pass, and then we'll go down here and see what's going on with this quest from, it looks like, a goblin. We'll grab that, we'll head further to the west here to get the rest of our scrap metal, and then I need to find out if this band of ogres is... are the ogres that have the sign of the earth, because we're not going to be able to deal with that solo, so we will have to see.